Hello and welcome to another informative episode on White Davy Construction and Farm. Oftentimes I've had persons say to me that they've always wanted to start a worm farm but they do not know what they will need or how to go about starting the farm. And so today I am going to be sharing with you six things that you need to know in order to start and run your worm farm effectively. And so we're going to be discussing what you need, what to or what not to feed them, what conditions are ideal for them, what type of bedding you can use, how to avoid fruit flies in the bin, and how to overwinter your worms. So without further ado, let's get into the first point, what you will need. So right off the bat, you're going to be needing worms. You're going to need a worm bin. You're going to need So you're going to need a worm bin, you're going to need bedding, you're going to need food supply, and you're going to need water. Let's talk about the worms. There are five major types of composting worms, and these are the red wigglers, which are the most popular type of worms. You have the European night crawlers, the Canadian night crawlers, the African night crawlers, and the blue worm, which is the least popular among these worms. Most persons prefer the red wiggler because of their rate of reproduction. And next is the worm bin. So there are many types of worm bins that you can use. There are the commercial ones which are more expensive. And then you have the cheaper ones that you can make for yourself. Like for example here I have the double toed system. And this outer bin here has no holes in the bottom because this is there as a catchment for whatever leash it may drain or water may drain from the worm bin. And then around the actual worm bin, I have holes all the way around the four sides of the bin. That is for air supply. And then in the bottom of the bin, this bin, I have holes as well and that is going to allow any extra moisture to drain out into the catchment tote and so in the bottom of this tote I have two bricks that this actual worm bin is sitting on that is to ensure that when the leash drains out in here the worm bin is not sitting down into the liquid so that is the reason why it is sitting on bricks here is another type of worm bin that I have. These are mixing trays and they do not have holes in the upper part of it. They do not have holes in the bottom either. So there is no drainage for this bin. This bin does not come with a cover so it is always open. And the reason I don't have holes in the bottom is because I know just how much moisture I need to put inside the bin. And so because I'm able to control the moisture, then I don't necessarily need to have holes. But if you are in doubt as to whether your bin is going to get too wet, then it is best to have holes in your system and another tray or tote, whatever system you're using in order to catch what leash it there is. Now here is another type of worm bin that I have, a bucket, but as you can see, I have turned it into a garden pot. Yes, and so this would work similar to the tote system where I have holes in the top, lots of holes, and when the cover is on there, there are holes as well and there are holes down in the bottom for drainage. Now here is another type of worm bin that has been made from used pallets. And so it is built where this is the front and these pieces are the gate. So every piece here can be taken out individually. You may notice that I have plants on top of it, but it is an actual worm bin. 
because I ran out of space to plant and so I decided to plant stuff on the top of it so this is a red wriggler worm bin it started off as a compost bin and then I added worms to it okay so now we have covered what you will need let's discuss what to feed the worms now worms can be fed food scraps from your kitchen the only type of food scraps that you would not feed to your worms would be things like meat dairy products or any acidic food like onions and citric food anything that is acidic because that can be harmful to them and the meat and the dairy can invite rodents into your worm bin so you wouldn't want to use that plus they might cause your worm bin to stink now you can feed your worms pretty much any organic matter that you have available so your leaves but they have to be dry you cannot feed them the green one because the green leaves or the green grass can get hot and may kill your worms you can also feed your worms finished compost which is my favorite meal for my worms now when it comes to what you're going to be feeding your worms you have to consider the fact that worms do not have teeth they have gizzard and so they are not able to chew their food and so you want to help them to digest the food faster you're going to have to give them something that is gritty like um, crushed egg eggshell for example and that will help them to digest the food more readily or you can blend the food and give it to them if you are so inclined you can also put the food scraps in the freezer or if it is winter just put it outside and let it freeze and then take it up when you're ready to feed it to them and let it thaw and make sure that it is at room temperature before you actually give it to them now worms do not eat the actual food that you give them they feed on the bacteria that is on the food okay so now we have covered what you can and cannot feed them but there is something important that you need to know about your feeding process you need to bury your food scraps and i'm going to be explaining why a little later on as well so let's look on the conditions that are ideal for these worms one worms breathe through their skin which means that at all times their bin must be moist so you always going to be checking the moisture level in your bin and you want to know if the content of your bin is moist enough you take it and you squeeze and you're supposed to see one or two drops of moisture coming out and then you will know that it is moist enough but you don't want to see water flowing out of your hand because that would mean that the content of your bin is too moist and then it will be uncomfortable for your worms if it is too moist and they will try to escape now this material that I am squeezing is finished compost that I'm going to be using for demonstration and starting a worm farm it ha I haven't had it any water treat yet so although you see me squeezing it to demonstrate it does not have enough moisture even though it is moist now the worms can live in this as it is because if you notice when I do that it clumps together which means that it has a certain amount of moisture in it and it falls apart easily when I crush it without much effort so as his they can live in this but it would require a little bit more moisture than this now as for temperature 
worms need temperature between 10 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit to be comfortable. Anything below 10 and they will start to they will start to slow down. Below 5 or once the temperature reach freezing, below 5 they will hibernate and when the temperature reach freezing, then your worms will die. There are some worms like the European night crawlers that are more resilient to temperature changes but at the same time they too will freeze it is worms do not like heat it cannot be too hot for them either so if the time is hot depending on where you have your worms you can do something to increase the airflow in their bin like perhaps go around and just stir up the content of the worm bin so that you will get a fresh flow of air in there or you can turn a fan on if they are indoors you want to place your worm bin somewhere in a shaded area if they're going to be outdoors that way they are cool especially if they're going to be in metallic or plastic containers because you know that can trap heat right so now that we have discussed the conditions that are ideal for worms let's look at the type of bedding that you can use so you can use coconut coir for for your bedding you can also use peat moss i do not have any peat moss at the moment you can use and if you're going to be using shredded paper you want to make sure that it is not shiny because a lot of the shiny paper either has a plastic or a metallic coating on them so when you're using your shredded paper you have to be careful make sure it is not the shiny type you can use letters you can use newspaper stuff like that you can use shredded cardboard as well they like to go in between the grooves to lay their eggs and because the cardboard tend to trap the moisture in there as well you can use dried leaves and my personal favorite bedding is the finished compost and this is ideal for me because i use the finished compost as both their bedding and their food so i just pour this in a bin put the worms in and my bin is complete i just need to moisten it and that is it but you not everyone will have finished compost and a lot of persons who are composting are doing so so that they can get rid of food scraps okay so now if you are going to be feeding your worms now we're on to the fifth point so if you're going to be feeding your worms food scraps chances are that it will attract fruit flies so that is the fifth point that we're going to be discussing now how can you prevent fruit flies from entering into your bin the first thing you want to do after you create your bin or whenever you're going to feed it is to dig down all the way down even to the bottom of the bin put the food scraps down there and then you want to make sure that you cover over the food scraps you have to make sure that it is properly covered so you're going to be covering it with more shredded paper you can even lay sheets of paper or burlap on top or a piece of canvas whatever you choose and that will help to prevent the fruit flies from getting in you can also put container with vinegar close to your worm bin and that will they will be more attracted to that than to your worm bin but it's best to just cover 
the food scrap and here when I make my worm bin I like to use this material here I have a double layer of material which is why it looks like this but um because initially I used the material that you would use on a baby crib for the mosquito net but I find that the flies get in through it and so on top of that I put a piece of window mesh and the window mesh does not need anything to go with it it works perfectly in keeping out the fruit flies so for this I just run um, sew a piece of elastic around to use it to hold onto the bin now if I am putting cover onto the bin with holes in it what I like to do is to use food grade silicone to hold the mesh okay let me remove this thing and show you what I am talking about I apologize for the mess but I was working on my worm farm today so a lot of things are out of place so here as you can see I use food grade silicone to cover the holes so that the fruit flies cannot get in so that is how you will prevent fruit flies from getting into your bin and now I'm just gonna show you so whether you're going to be using shredded paper or you're going to be using peat moss, coconut coir or anything else whatever you're using for your bedding you want to put it into your container and you're going to dampen it down I'm just going to use a small amount of liquid here since as this is already moist and you want to stir the material spend the time and stir the material to ensure that you have moisture going through all of it so you're going to stir the material and when you're satisfied and you're satisfied after you've squeezed the material do you see that a few droplets of water and it clumps together and you just touch it and it falls apart that is how you know that the content of your bin is moist enough for your worms you don't need any more moisture than that anything more than that is in excess and will be harmful to your worms okay and then the next step after adding the bedding is to add your worms to the content of the bin okay so as this is only for demonstrative purposes I have extracted this from one of my worm bins so you're going to put your worms in you should know that once you put your worms into the bin this is a new environment for them and so they may attempt to escape from the bin what you want to do is to shine a light on the bin so that they will go down to try to escape from the light because light dries out their skin and as I mentioned before they need moisture in order to breathe through their skin or they will die so they will try to their best to escape from the light now after doing that I'm just washing my hands right so after doing that one thing that you need to know is that it can take up to three weeks for the worms to settle into their new environment so you need to monitor your bin regularly during that three weeks to make sure that your worms are not trying to escape then you're going to add whatever food you're going to be giving them you want to bury that in your bedding then you're going to get more bedding and put on top of the worms you can use your shredded paper or whatever choice you may have and then you're going to be covering up the content 
as soon as you realize that the worms have settled in you want to take the light away it is important to keep your worm bin covered and especially depending on where you're going to be keeping it because if you're going to be keeping it inside your house for a certainty, you have to have it covered because you don't want the flies to get in. And those little buggers seem to be so resilient that sometimes they will find their way down through what you have on the top of your bin and start laying eggs. And once they start laying eggs, Lord help you, that is it. It's very difficult to get rid of them. But you can. So, you want to think about also how to keep the bin moist for longer so you may choose to use the cover that came with your bin or you may choose to put newspaper or cardboard or something of the sorts over the content of your bin to help to keep in the moisture now if you find that your worm bin is too moist you can always Put shredded paper or cardboard in the bottom of your bin and that will absorb some of the moisture or you can just turn the content of your bin out onto something where it is safe for the worms and spread it out a bit so that it will dry out a little but you have to be careful because you don't want to dry it out too much because that can lead to the death of your worms now we're going to be discussing the sixth and final point and that is how to overwinter your worms so as i showed you earlier i have this outdoor worm bin and there is another outdoor worm bin and yet another outdoor worm bin now i live in cold saskatchewan where temperatures can go down to minus 45 without wind chill and so it is important for me to take up my worms as soon as temperatures reach below 10 degrees. So you want to take up your worms and you need to have, depending on what you have your worms in outside, if you're using things like a tote or a bucket or a tray, then you can easily move it inside. But for mine, where my bins are stationary, then I have to bring them in and put them in smaller containers, which is why I, as I mentioned earlier, I was building my worm farm. So this is to the shelving. I'm going to be getting all of these black trees that I have here. I'm going to be getting those and I will be putting them in here so all that those worms that I'd get from outside will be on this shelf here so you have to take your worms indoor whether you're going to be keeping them in your basement under your kitchen sink uh, anywhere that is ideal in your house or if you have a heated garage then you can keep them in there if you're living in environment where it doesn't get too cold to the point where it can be detrimental to your worms but it still is cold then what you can do is get a nice warm blanket and just throw it over your bin and that will help to keep them warm outdoors so that is how you take care of your worms over the winter did you find this video informative would you like to learn more if so why not take a moment to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so that you can be updated whenever there's a new video like this that is out that's it guys i thank you for watching and i hope you have yourself a wonderful day